did on August 30th. And it's today is November uh, 10th. I mean, how is it possible that, that the department doesn't know how many immediate family members are still left? I think it's uh, in Afghanistan. I don't have a number for you. We believe it's uh, certainly uh, most likely in the dozens. Uh, but one of the reasons we put the memo out last week was to encourage service members to come forward. Embarrassing. The Pentagon taking heat, and they should, over its efforts to rescue family members, or lack thereof, of American troops still stranded in Afghanistan and our allies. Our next guest served on the front lines of the war on terror as members of the elite Navy SEAL teams and now are running for Congress. Retired Navy SEAL sniper Brady Duke is here, running for Florida's 7th Congressional District. Retired Navy SEAL Senior Chief Derek, uh, Derek Van Orden wants to represent Wisconsin's 3rd District. Uh, almost got it last time. He wants it this time. Eli Crane joined the Navy days after 9-11 and is running in Arizona's first district, already a very successful businessman. And Morgan Luttrell served in multiple tours in Iraq and Afghanistan, is aiming to represent Texas 8th Congressional District. And retired Navy SEAL and former Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke is running for Montana's brand new second district. They join us now to react. Uh, first off, Congressman Zinke, I'm going to start with you. How was that acceptable that Admiral Kirby, a spokesperson, uh, for the Pentagon cannot tell us who is left behind and doesn't seem that interested. Well, you know, your point is excellent. And where is the congressional investigations? This is a Biden created crisis that we've left our family members. We've left our allies hanging in the, in the winds. And not only has our government not been helpful of getting our people out, they have been in many cases the obstacles. Now, I'm contacted every day by individuals that have interpreters, family members that need to get out of that country. And in many cases, our State Department under this administration has not only been not helpful, they are the chief obstacle of getting our people out. We should have investigations and get to the truth about what's going on. Uh, Eli, you know what they said? Uh, well, we offered 19 times to get them out. But what they say is you can go, but leave your family behind. What person is going to leave their family behind in that place and just go to get on a plane by themselves? And now the administration says, well, we made them an offer. Eli? Well, you're right. And it's just uh, one of the, yeah, it's just one of the many issues that are destroying this country. I think we all recognize it. That's why you have five Navy SEALs on the screen who are all running for office because we want to serve this country again. We need your help. We need you guys to get on our website, support us, and we also want you guys to go become precinct committee members. We also want you to run for school board. If we want a government that's of, for, and by the people, we got to start acting like it. Enough about party and start thinking about the country. Uh, I want you to take this in, Morgan. This is the uh, Pentagon spokesperson, Admiral Kirby, who I know is, is a good guy. I think he's subjected to bad policy. This is what he actually said when it came to threats to America. Which is a bigger threat, the climate or China? Both are equally important. Bo both are, uh, are challenges that the secretary wants the senior leadership at the Pentagon to be focused on, as well as many others, too. Morgan, who should we be more concerned with? The planet dropping one degree or going up one degree? Or China's Navy, which has surpassed ours, and the way they plowed over Hong Kong and looking to take over Central and South America economically and who knows what else. What's a bigger threat to Morgan Luttrell? Uh, obviously, China. China, I mean, the, the Navy is one thing, but their cybersecurity threats, they're pumping billions of dollars into their cyber. <clears throat> cyber platforms, which we're not looking at, in my opinion. And I'd like to add this about the Afghanistan issue. If the Biden administration is so concerned about saving American lives with these mandates and these mask mandates and so on and so forth, why don't they mandate we rescue our citizens and save their lives as well over in Afghanistan? Well, I was fortunate enough to run into an interpreter that served with us overseas for so long uh, in the past couple of weeks, and his family's still over there. And he, he pleaded with us. He begged us. He's like, who do I need to get to help me get my family over? He spoke perfect English. Uh, where's that at? All, right. all, all Biden has to do is say, let's do this. Let's mandate this. Task Millie, task Austin, and go get our people. It's, it's, if, they, if, right. if they're pumping that much, if Big Pharma's pumping that much money into the DNC, that th all you're hearing on the news is about mandates and vaccines. Why don't we get some people to say the same thing about our citizens overseas and bring them home?
Uh, yeah, or the allies that helped you guys for 20 years. Hey, Brady, if uh, the president doesn't say that and you are Austin or Millie, how could you wear the uniform and just move on to something else? I know it's the commander in chief, but at what point is the breaking point when it comes to red, white, and blue and serving a president that's indifferent to a war he says he lost faith in? Yeah, you know, I think it's 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 really sad to see the the leadership at this point seeming to to be careless about taking responsibility for what was a botched withdrawal and I think withdrawal is is going too far and I think it's really just a retreat. You know, you can't say that it's a success when you turn your back to the enemy on the battlefield. You know, while there's Americans uh, that we must we must rescue from this country. Um, right. you know, I think that it we have to we have to understand that this was a failure that this was a failure and we cannot continue this way it was deeply un-american it's not fair to you guys you deserve better right. someone made the final decision while you fought for 20 years it is just not fair real quick what is great for us is that you're here on veterans day and you're still trying to give back only in a suit instead of a uniform uh, let's go around starting with you congressman zinke who served as secretary of the interior uh what are your thoughts today you know, the level of sacrifice that has been made, particularly, you know, to our veterans and the first line guys and their families. You know, the day is a celebration of how great the character is of our veterans and our military. Uh, we have challenges, but I think you're yeah. absolutely right. It's red, white, and blue, and let's take back this country. Congressman, uh, excuse me, not Congressman, but Eli Crane, you want to be a Congressman. Uh, your thoughts today, because a lot of people are suffering because they see what happened in late August, and they know there's two weeks left in December to get people out, but the winter gets too tough. But what are your thoughts on Veterans Day? Eli? Well, my thoughts are this. Freedom is always one generation away from extinction. We have to act like that. These guys are willing to go serve. The time for complacency right. is over. And you can see how quickly this radical ideology can right. destroy this country if we don't do something about it. Derek Van Orden. Hey, listen, uh, today is Veterans Day, as we said, and I want to say thanks to every single man and woman that has served our nation, given us freedom to begin with from the Revolutionary, Revolutionary War and kept this nation free. We owe a debt of gratitude to our veterans. We've had a spike in uh, veteran suicide, 41% wow. over uh, Q2 to Q3. And we need to make sure that our veterans uh, understand that we love and care for them and that the duty never ends. And another thing today that people don't think about, all the Gold Star families who've lost men and women serving our country deserve our eternal respect. That's a debt that cannot be repaid. So thank them today, too, if you also see them. Absolutely. And uh, Brady Duke? Yeah, I think I'm proud of my service. I know many veterans are proud of their service. And I, I just want to say to those who have served before me, thank you very much. And those who have served uh, amongst me, thank you very much. You know, um, I have people thanking me for my service. And, you know, I think anyone who has served in this military has played a vital role um, in, in protecting our freedoms um, and holding back the enemy. And I think, you know, we should, we should definitely say thank you. Morgan, what's the name of your PAC? You guys have formed a PAC in your mission to win next year. Well, before I get into that, I, I would like to say something about Veterans Day, too, because you've heard everybody on the screen thanking, thank, you thank the veterans. I, and it, it's the people that are walking around that, you, that, that are very unassuming. I walk up to them all the time. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Marcus. But I also say thank you to the spouses, because without them, we wouldn't be who we are today. And they made such sacrifices. So when I share my, my emotions about Veterans Day, I always thank the spouses. And I think that's extremely important. We should never forget that. OK. Um, and the name of your pack, Ryan? It's sealpack.org. Okay. And uh, it helps. We have seven SEALs now, uh, yeah. three Green Berets, gotcha. Rangers. So uh, we're supporting the, our, our patriots up front. All right, guys, always great to see you. Thanks so much. Best of luck.